Today, I've got three things that I kind of wish I knew when I was getting started fly fishing. Hey everyone, Matt here with The Northern Angler. We're a small, independent shop located in Traverse City, Michigan. You can learn more about our guide service and fly shop at thenorthernangler.com. Well, it's summer here in Northern Michigan and everyone wants to be on the water. We've been doing plenty of intro guide trips, a few classes, and just helping people out, getting ready to be on the water every day in the shop. And it's had me thinking about some of the things I wish I knew when I first got into the sport, some of the things that really tripped me up and I got caught on and fixated on. And so I wanted to go over some of these things, hoping that you can just skip that stage and be on the water, not having to worry about it. So let's jump right in. All right, no contest on number one. That was really easy for me to pick out here, and that is to enjoy the process. I'm sorry, I'm gonna break everyone's hearts right away. You're not gonna walk into this sport and be good right away. It's just not realistic. I know that's kind of the cultural expectations nowadays where people want that instant gratification. And I think mostly because this is a leisure sport, this is something people do in their downtime that they want to just walk in, buy an outfit, head to the river and boom, catch a monster trout. And it's just, it's just not realistic. I'm sorry. It's not the way it is. You wouldn't show up and grab a few golf clubs and expect to be good at golf. Would you? No, it takes time. The sport demands your attention. It demands your focus and it demands that you invest time on the water and off the water. If you really want to be good, spend time off the water. So my advice to you all is enjoy that process. Go into this sport with a learning mindset. Go to the river looking to learn something, not looking to always just catch a huge fish. That's You're just going to end up with disappointment because that's mother nature. It's not always exactly what you think it's going to be. You can't have a, an algorithm. You can't have a, an, an equation where you can plug everything in and boom, you catch a fish. That's not, that's not how it is. So if you take on that student role, learn from the fish, learn from the bugs, learn from the river, you'll enjoy this process. You'll enjoy growing in this sport. And if you can do that, you're going to have so much more fun. You know, I, I would encourage you go to the river, make mistakes, take note of those mistakes, bring them back to your local fly shop and have them help you with it. Say, Hey, I couldn't figure out what not to use for this size fly, this size leader. They're there to help you with that. I couldn't figure out what fly to use when I was seeing this and these kind of conditions. They are there to help you with that. So be a student of this sport and enjoy that learning process. The second one on my list has a lot to do with what people see when they walk into our fly shop, and that is rows and rows and rows and rows of flies. It can be utterly overwhelming how many flies there are just to catch up some fish out there, right? I mean, it's just, it's silly. And you need to know that flies are not everything. And it, it almost hurts me to say that because I have a lot of flies. I love flies. I, that's one of the things that really hooked me in this sport is creating my own fly and my own vision of what some of these bugs look like and try and match these characteristics I can put on a hook with materials to attract fish, but it's not everything. And you can get so bogged down in figuring out what exact fly to use in which situation that it, it can, it can handicap you and it can keep you from being on the water. Like we talked about in the first one and being a student, be learning from the fish, learning from the water. And I hate to admit it. I really do. But when I was getting started, some days I would stay home and tie flies instead of going fishing because I was convinced I didn't have the right thing in my box. And looking back now, I absolutely regret that. I should have just gone to the water, figured it out, used what I had. I mean, I just convinced myself that the flies in my box weren't going to catch fish. And some of that's, you know, reading these glossy fly tying articles and seeing these people catch these big fish on their specific fly. 
you don't have to have every fly out there. <laughs> That's terrible advice from someone I know that manages a fly shop, but it's true. And there's some situations where you need something really, really specific. Absolutely. And a lot of times something specific can work better, but it doesn't mean you're not going to catch fish just having something generic maybe. So if you're just getting started, my advice is go into your local fly shop. Talk to the guys who work there. They're on the water. They live for this stuff. Talk to the guides. Ask them for some confidence patterns. You know, uh, they're going to be happy. <laughs> you're buying flies. You should be buying flies from them, by the way. Keeps them in business. But ask them for some confidence patterns. They can be stuff like pheasant tails, hares ear, prince nymphs, atoms, you know, elk hair caddis, things like that. Maybe we'll do a video just on confidence flies, the, the classics you can't leave home without. But ask them because every river's different, every watershed's different. And if you really want the right info, don't just ask what fly. Ask another question. Ask how you should be fishing it, how to present it. And you know, maybe, yeah, you just have 10 different flies and a few different sizes in your box. But I bet you when you're getting started, that's a better way to do it than to be convinced you have to have 50 different styles of mayflies. You can do it with a lot less and you can be on the water a lot more and still having fun, still learning without owning every fly or tying every fly under the sun. The last one, personally, I have Michigan to thank for, and that is that you can fly fish for almost anything that swims. That is such a cool, unique thing about the Midwest and tons of different parts of the country is that you have way more than trout. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people just ha have trouble breaking that mold of that, that trout centric mindset that is fly fishing. I can't tell you how many people give me a sideways, weird cross-eyed look when I tell them we fly fish for salmon, for steelhead, for pike, for gar, for muskie. I probably forgot a ton of them. I mean, you can go catch a bowfin on a fly if you want. And that's what makes this sport so redeeming for me is that I can find something and make it my project. I can say, you know what? I kind of want to what would it be like to catch that fish? You know, what would it take? What it, it forces you to learn about that fish, learn about its environment and understand it and respect it a little bit more, which I love. I mean, it's this, this tinker mentality. And I think that's what this sport attracts is people who like to problem solve. So know that you can go fish for bass, bluegill, you know, pike, muskie, all these things. And I tell you what, it's going to make you a better angler. Even if trout is your favorite, it's going to make you a better trout angler because it's going to force you to adapt and just improve every different part of your game. And the more well-rounded you are as an angler means you can handle different situations. You know, oh, we got super high, dirty water and tons of wind, but you want to go fish? Well, doing that for other species, figuring out, you know, what works in different light conditions, water conditions, and just being on the water period is going to make you a better angler for whatever your core quarry is. So get out there, chase everything you can with the fly. That's my advice. And don't be so, so set on trout. You can't force it. Some days trout fishing just is rough. Look at the alternatives. Go have fun and appreciate fishing for different stuff. Enjoy where you are because there's probably something you can make fun. I guarantee it, even if it's not what you'd love to be doing all the time, you can still have fun. So get out there, chase different stuff. It'll make you a better angler. All right, that's it for me today. I know, short one, just some things I've taken from my personal experience that I think can really help someone that's new. You don't want to get hung up on some of this stuff, overly focused. You should be on the water having fun. So remember, enjoy the process. You're not going to be good right away. It's just the way it is. Practice, learn from the water, learn from the fish, ask lots of questions of your local shop. That's what they're there for. Two, don't get hung up on flies. Flies aren't everything. You got to have some, but presentation is pretty darn important too. 
And last, go fish for a bunch of stuff. There's so many things that we can chase nowadays with these amazing rods, amazing lines, and people who've done that homework. So it's gonna make you a better angler. Go chase some different stuff. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If any of this was helpful, think about giving us a thumbs up. It's a big help for us. Leave us some comments down below. I'm sure all of you have tons of stuff you wish you knew as you were getting into fly fishing. So share that with people. It's helpful. It's always helpful to learn from people. And I find most people in this sport are just so friendly and so willing to share what they've learned. And it's always fun to see other people's perspectives. If you'd like to support this channel, check out thenorthernangler.com next time you need any gear. At the very least, try and support your local fly shops. We'll see you all soon on the water or in the shop. Thank you.